guys. Right, today we're going to do the um, translucent um, clay thing that I experimented with the other day. So what we're going to need is some translucent clay, obviously. Use whichever brand you've got. I just happen to have some Cernet open, so I'm going to use Cernet. Um, you're going to need some alcohol ink. I'm using um, Ranger's Snow Cap. You can, again, use whichever alcohol ink you've got. Uh, a little bit of um, spray alcohol. Um, you know, the stuff you can get from the drugstore or the chemists or whatever. Uh, just to thin this down a little bit and it's not too stark. Uh, some perfect pearls. Uh, any mica powder, as long as it's um, a colour you like. I'm just going to go with this confetti white one. It's a little bit silvery, but it works well with the white. And I'm also going to do a little piece as a test with some of this copper alcohol ink. Um, so, um, we'll see how that turns out. Right. Uh, Oh, before we start, just wanted to show you this. Um, I did. I've just cut this straight from the block, and I conditioned this just to show you that. Can you see the placking in here where the air's trapped? That's straight off the block. Um, so there's obviously air trapped in the manufacturing process. So. Um, this will work better if you condition your clay first. As you can see, I've conditioned mine and I've no placking in that. Um, just um, once you get it warm and you start putting it through your pasta machine or rolling out, um, what I tend to do is, oh, I'll show you on this bit of scrap, um, I've put my finger there and then I feed that into my rollers so when it goes in it'll squeeze from this end and not get any bubbles in and then I gently just stretch stretch and do it again stretch stretch do it again uh, and that seems to help getting rid of any bubbles in your clay um, which works really well when you when you're making like four stone techniques and stuff. Sometimes a bit of placking helps, but with this, I think um, we don't really want any placking in to help try and keep it nice and clear. Uh, so yeah, just a little tip there. Right, I'll get uh, some clay conditioned and get some tools together, and I'll be back in a sec. Hi guys, right, I've conditioned. Uh, zero on my pasta machine and then I've just folded it over and smoothed out uh, just to make it a bit thicker um, I've got a little piece to one side that I'm going to use with the copper and I'm just going to cut a piece off this because I just want to try using it without the um, the perfect pearls on and see, see what happens so I'm just going to put this bit to one side um, to use and then we'll um, work on this piece. So I've just got my mica powder and I'm just going to put some over the surfaces, just a light dusting because um, I think this will just help it separate and not clump up too much um, and then it'll keep everything really angular um, oh, for that quartzy look if that makes sense and I'm not putting a massive amount on just the tip of my brush and dusting around just to make sure that uh, 
it's got a little coating on. And then I'm just going to start chopping. And I'm just moving the pieces away and they don't stick too much together. And then I'll go the other way. a little tumble in that residue of um, mica powder. That is better because they're definitely not clumping together as much. Doing it this way first. If you see any big clumps, maybe just separate them off. some quite fine at that end and then there we go give them another tumble just to pick that loose mica up Make sure there's no bits that are too clumped together. The other thing is I don't want to handle them too much because then it um, takes that sharpness off, doesn't it? If that makes sense. All your pieces start to be rounded. I've just seen a cat hair in there somewhere. Where's it gone? I've lost it. I'm sure it'll turn up when I don't want it. I'll just separate a few of these other pieces and get myself a scrap of waxed paper. Let's get all these on here. Where's that hair? Did I get it? I think I got it. Right, I'm just loosely gonna break these up a little bit again. I don't wanna handle it too much. And I keep me angular pieces. I'm gonna spritz with some alcohol first. I'm just going to put a few drops of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see how we go with that. Give this a tumble. I'll just break a few of these little clumps up gently as I can. And you could put this in a poly bag I suppose uh, but I'm trying to keep the pieces quite angular aren't I? So right let's just spread them out a little bit 
and they can dry. Right, I'll pop this to one side. And we'll do the, um, the, the bit with no mica on. is the bit we're going to do with no mica on just to see if there's any difference really um, except for it sticking together it shouldn't be too bad again I'm going to try and separate best I can although I don't think that's going to work <laughs> oh dear see the mica really does help to stop it sticking doesn't it Let's just separate these bits off. Let's see if I can loosen them up with my blade when I'm not mauling with them. Yeah, the, the mica definitely helps. Um, you don't have to handle it as much then, do you? I might, I'm just going to give it a spray with a bit of alcohol to see if that helps to separate them a bit better. a little bit because it's kept my blade a bit wet. Right, let's get a scrap. Put these on. sticky and let's just put a couple of drops of alcohol ink on let's see if we can oh really sticky now yeah the mica definitely helps guys These are barely getting any coating on them because they're just clumped together. Um, I'll try a little bit more. started to round off can you see definitely prefer uh, putting the mica powder on just seems to get a, a better result I'll spread this out best I can I don't didn't want to mess with it too much right I'll pop this to one side um, and we'll do the the copper bit, but I'm just going to clean my hands up and stuff, so I'll be back in a sec. Hi guys. Right, we'll do the copper now. So, I'll give it a really good shake. Um, and I'm, I am going to use the 
powder on this one again. I just found it so much easier to keep separate, keep it separated. So I didn't have to mess with it too much. Dust for all the edges and we'll start chopping. You can see just the difference, can't you? What that powder makes. dust to help these other pieces. Much better doing it with the mica powder. Much better. It keeps your pieces really angular. brush. Sorry, I was blaming Clarence. I take it all back. Get my scrap of paper ready. Again, I'm going to put a little bit of alcohol on just to thin it a little. too much. Let's put a little bit more on. Oh, I've got it stuck under my nails. I've just realised I haven't taken my jewellery off, so I hope I don't get stuff all over it. A bit late now. I think we need a bit more. Maybe thinning this out isn't as uh, good with it being darker. Oh, that's better. Let's try and break some of these clumps up. It all seems pretty well coated. Um, it's just sticking now because of the uh, the alcohol, I think. There we go. 
I'm not sure if I should put a little bit more on because there are a few little white pieces. bunch it together a bit and it doesn't go on the paper and add a few more drops I don't know if it's the alcohol ink or... But this seems a little bit more stickier once I put the alcohol ink on. It's probably the ink, isn't it? But that will be fine. Right, guys. Ugh. I'll put this to one side. Let the alcohol ink uh, dry off. And we'll come back in a bit and uh, get them formed. Hi guys, I'm back. We're all dry. Uh, so I've got the one with the copper alcohol ink. I've got the one here that we didn't put any um, mica powder on. And you can see this one that has got the mica powder on. So we'll start with the big one first, I think. Um, so all I'm going to do is get it to come together I don't want to over squish it I'm just getting it together first before I take it off this paper right. just going to try and form it into a block and I'm also just going to shut the door because my husband's just decided to start drilling one second why do they always start doing DIY when you're halfway through doing the video anyway I'm just Squishing my block together. There we go. I'm now going to wipe it over with some alcohol just to take that ink off the outside because um, it'll save uh, having to sand it off later let's get it clean a bit and do it again that's not the best one. And now I've got loads of them. I'll just put a bit more alcohol on. block of that one. I'm just going to pop it to one side while we do the others. I know this isn't a massive amount guys, I just um, don't like being wasteful. So I'm going to 
make this into just a little flat piece. I can get one cabochon out of it then, can't I? Still a little bit tacky this one, as you can see, it's leaving some white. There we go. And again, I'm just going to give it a wipe to get rid of that ex excess alcohol ink. From the outside. Pop that to one side. It's white off my hands. And now we'll do the same with the copper. is going to be quite interesting. I'm wondering if it's stained the um, the clay a little because of the colour that's in it. There we go. And again, a bit of alcohol. And let's get that excess off. Oh, you can see with this one, I think this one's going to look pretty cool. And you don't have to wipe it over. It's just, you know, I'm not a massive fan of sanding. So I just want to take the excess off. Let's get a bit more. There. Right, let's make something with these. Uh, just clean my hands again. Now then, what do we want to make? Maybe just do some simple cabs. Where's my blade? Well, I'm just going to slice off a thin slither of this front layer. I'll put that to one side, it won't be wasted. And I think, because I don't want to put it through the pasta machine, so if I cut two pieces the same thickness, I could join them. And make a cab that way. I didn't cut them very well, did I? As usual, I actually think it's a bit of alcohol ink of the copper one, but I've got it now. And I'll do it 
to my lollipop stick trick. is going to be too much but we'll see I don't know where my big roller is so I'll use this one oh three is perfect there we go Shall we do? Da, da, da. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Just a little bit longer. That would work. Maybe try the next time down. Oh yeah. Right. And I might be able to get. Maybe a couple of earrings. No. No. I'll just do one cab. Let's give it a little burnish. wipe over with a bit of alcohol um, just in case there's any residue on the top there we go let's find myself a nice bit of paper There we've got one cab out of the white with mica. Now with this piece, because it's so thin, I think what I might I might do a little experiment with this bit and put it over some coloured clay. So I'll do that in a minute. Um, pop that to one side. Uh, I'm gonna squish this together and use it as an infill um, for a mould but I think I'll cut this piece in half put it together and we'll make another cabochon this was the piece with uh, no mica in it Let's see if I can get this to cut in half nicely. Give it a little burnish. I think a two will 
have to suffice on these. Where's my roller gone? Oh, I found my big one. There we go. So shall I use? Maybe I could just do a different shape to one using this and I can trim the top. Right. I'm going to pick it up and line it up, then I know it's straight. Because I've just distorted it already. back straight and I'll just trim this top end off square and let's see if I can pick it up and put it on this paper without oh my things just fell off the end let's see if I can pick this up without distorting it Started. I'll give it a burnish first and then we'll take it from there. to shape. on a little wipe as well just to make sure I've not got any excess alcohol on the top right so we've got two little it's not very straight that is it guys let's see if I can get it to straighten up a little bit this side Where's my, oh, I'll use this use your brain Catherine use your brain get off do you know I'm shaped flipping wooden today aren't I it's just 
wipe that and it won't stick. There we go. Right, I'm happy now. So that's two little pendants. With that one. Put these scraps to one side to use as a fill. to put it into a mould or yeah I think I will I think I will I'm going to slice the um, the surface off and then pop it into a mould I think I'll just turn it upright and I can get a slither off the front my new moulds. Do you know, I bet you're all cursing me, aren't you? Because I'm supposed to be prepared and I've not even, I can't even find my moulds. What have I done with them? I only had them. Nope. Oh, found you. Ta-da. Right, I think I'm going to pop this one into whoop, into this mould but I'm just going to use my acrylic block to flatten it so I don't roll the shape and get rid of the lovely pattern. Is that going to be big enough? Yes. front of you. I'll just make sure it's in the corners. Before I slice the excess off. These moulds are fabulous. The clay just doesn't stick at all, which is great, but sometimes it's a pain because it starts lifting out as you're trying to roll it. Right, that should suffice, I think. I'll just roll that bit back in that decided it didn't want to stay. Oh, and now we've got a cat who's decided she wants to go back out. I'll just let the cat out. Yeah, I don't know, between my husband and the cats today, I'm having a right run around, aren't I? Right, a bit of alcohol on this. Just going to wipe over the back, get the excess off, then it looks pretty. But I'll just get another scrap of paper so I could turn this out. And I'm not going to mess with that now. Um, I'll just leave it on the uh, on the paper 
I will just straighten this edge up because it got a little bit squished as I was getting it out. Right, so that's a cab for each of our bits. Now then, should I mix some colours up? Um, sorry, I was just having a drink of my coffee while I was thinking. Um, I think I'll pop this lump in a mould and pop this thin slither over the top so it's like a veneer over it. And then maybe with this piece, um, I'll uh, flatten it out and again use it as a veneer. But I might, um, I'm trying to think what colour it would look nice over. Maybe, um, maybe a metallic. Um, yeah. Right, I'll go and condition a bit of metallic uh, and finish my drink. And... Um, We'll take it from there. See you in a minute. Alright guys, I've just got some um, Fimo Effect. Um, it's metallic gold. Uh, I've conditioned it. Um, and I'm, what I'm going to do is my little, you know, my little trick where I roll it up. Um, and then cut through it so that it's not um, all flat one colour. Right, I'm making the mica shift in it, if that makes sense. So I'm just twisting and squishing and twisting. And then when I cut it in half in a second, um, it won't all be just one flat colour of gold. Um, there'll be a bit of marbling in it. Um, don't know what mould to use. Maybe use my Old Faithful. I think I've, I've put a link um, at the bottom of the page to where I get these blue moulds from. Um, he delivers all over the world, I think. Um, he's the guy who makes Ludmilla... Um, I can't remember the lady's surname. He makes moulds for her. Um... Is on Etsy, uh, but is I wouldn't say they're the dirt cheap, but they're really good quality. Um, really good quality. I've these, this is where I've caught it with my blade when I've been cutting stuff out, but I really do like um, his molds, right? So I'm just going to slice this through, and can you see now what I mean? Um, it's not all, it's not just a flat colour now for my cabochon. Um, so I'm just going to put this piece in here. Uh, and then I'll put a veneer over it and uh, pop it back in the mould. And it'll, um, that was a good guess for the size, wasn't it? Um, it just helps with the shape, doesn't it, then? It's just my way of doing it. I can roughly do that. In fact, I'll just give that a bit more of a press because I've still got a couple of herb bubbles in. Get back in. A little roll. There we go. Uh, and now, well, let me just wipe that because that female saw got so much mica in it that it sticks to everything. Um, right, now I need 
need to elongate this. Um, I don't really want to put it through my pasta machine. I'll give it a squish first, see how I go with the squishing. Because um, I don't want to distort the, the pattern too much. And then once I've got it thin enough, I might just pass it through. Yeah, that should work. I'll pass this through my pasta machine on a thin setting now. Um, I'll be back in a sec. So I've just put it through on a five um, and I'm just gonna lay this over my cabochon now what I'm gonna do is starting from this end just gently press just don't want to trap any air in there And then go around with my finger again just to make sure I've not trapped any air inside and I was going to pop this back in my mold but it's actually um it's gone over really well can't see any air trapped so I may just um Oh, muck on my nail and I've wiped it on my clay. That'll teach me. Just going around with this wet cloth then my finger doesn't drag. There we go. Where's my flexi blade? Yeah, I'm just going to do this, guys, and go around and cut it instead. nip these pieces off there we go cut that a bit short at that end I'll just stretch it just going to pinch the edge over covered on one side and I think I will pop it back in the mould just to help me trim that back off because I like keeping everything nice and neat let's get you back in little roll Oop. and then just cut this excess off
Now I'm thinking maybe I should put these little pieces on. I'll have to cut a bit more off though, won't I? I'll just gouge in a little bit in the middle. There we go. And I'll just put these pieces on to make it oh, stick into my finger. So that there's no gold showing really. And a little bit there. Oh, <laughs> it's getting quite warm in here because I've shut the door and, of course, my oven's on. Uh, I think everything's getting a bit sticky. off and hope the gold doesn't pop back through. Oh, I knew that'd happen. I'll use that little thin slither to recover it. Don't mind a bit popping through, but nicer on the back really won't it if it's not uh, gold on one side and thingy on the other it's pulling the edges in then it's not rough some of this up side of this one oh turn over thank you and again I'm just going to rub over with a little bit of um, alcohol just to make sure that there's no excess ink on there Right, so we've got one from each of them, uh, a veneer from one of them, and I think, I'll just get these scraps up guys, I think with this little thin sliver I'll do the same um, and use this as a fill uh, but I think I'll just make a flat cab just to make it a bit easier um, so yeah I'll just squish this again it's stuck to my plate because I forgot to wet it right I'll just pass this through my pasta machine um, to get it as thin as I can I did it on a five and what shape shall we do? Well that'll be big enough. Oh yes, just right. I'm just gonna put these two scraps together and roll them out on um on a zero. Oh, 
fine. Let's give it a little burnish. I'm just going to stretch this a teensy bit just to make sure it's going to fit. Down without getting any bubbles. Give it a burnish. I think I might put some uh, cling wrap over this so it'll dorm a little bit. I just, it's old packaging actually, but it is like quite a strong cling wrap. Um, I'll just pop that over there. I need it to be a bit tighter. Oh, let's just make sure I'm not. There we go. Just going to pick this up and get any crumbs off. Save me doing it later. There we go, no crumbs. I'll pop you there. And I'll just give it a little burnish, uh, just in case there's um, any wrinkles from the cling wrap. There we go, guys. So I've done two veneers and one cab of each of the things that we did. Um, so I'm going to pop these in the oven and i will have a tidy up and see you when they're baked see you in a minute hi guys they're all done and baked i uh, just got them out the ice water uh, that's the one that's got the mica in and that's the one without now even me just looking at them I can't actually see much of a difference so I think it's better to use the mica um, to, to stop it all clumping together um, so that's those two there's the veneer on gold which um, just looks I don't know. Looks like some sort of stone. I mean, I haven't even given these a buff or anything yet. So I'm assuming they're going to come up even better. Um, so that's the veneer on gold. That was the um, veneer of the copper one. It's just the the back bit that I used that looks fab I can't tell you about the the depth of the veining and stuff looks amazing um, so yeah doing it with coloured um, inks works really well and that's the one where it was just one big lump of the stuff and that looks really cool as well um, I've got a couple of little dints in it where it wasn't compacted together um, quite as much but um, I think what I'm going to do with these is just give them a little rub over 
to get any uh, imperfections off the surface uh, and then I'm going to resin them so I think I'll um, buff a couple and resin a couple um, just so we can see what the difference is I'm not going to do that on screen you've seen me do buffing and resining loads just because I know this video is going to be a long one um, so I don't want to add that into it so I'll just go off and give these um, a bit of a buff and a resin and I'll come back when they're, when they're done ok guys see you in a more hi guys I've brought my camera down just to because I've realised with the sun coming in at this angle you can see the stones really well this is the one with the copper um, alcohol ink and I've just UV resined one thin coat but you I mean you can see the the depth and dimension on that looks fab this is the one that was gold with just a veneer on and all I've done is buff that but that veneer is interesting um, I may have to see what it looks like over the top of um, some different colours um, it's unusual isn't it but I like it and then this was the um, piece with the um, mica in which you really can't tell that there's mica in um, but it just looks really pretty Again, I've just buffed this. I haven't done anything else to the surface. This was the one without my car. Um, like I said, I don't really think there's any difference. So I'll probably continue using the mica. Because I think it just helps without it sticking together, doesn't it? Helps a bit. And you can see some of it's, it's compared to this one. Um, if I put them side by side because I've rolled this out a little bit it's kind of stretched it a bit and it still looks cool but I think I prefer just cutting a piece and um, doing it that way rather than the way I did that one but I mean, it's still got some nice depth and stuff to it. It looks cool. Quartzy, I suppose. But my absolute favourite. I am definitely, definitely going to be doing this again. Look at that. You see bits of mica. And the, the different depths of the vein. Um, I'm absolutely blown away with how this looks i am definitely definitely going to be doing this again uh, and that was just um lightly buffed and a bit of um a thin coat of uv resin on it so i'm really pleased how these have turned out um so the the thinness on this is cool so it'd be nice to see what it'd be like with different colors underneath because you can see the gold but you don't really you can't really tell it's gold underneath there uh, but yeah that by far as a veneer uh, just looks amazing um, I'm not going to turn these into anything yet guys because this video is going to be um, really long as it is <gasps> the colour of my nails um yeah so thanks for watching um hopefully you all have a go and see what you think about um just using the uh translucent clay with you know i'm going to try a few other colours 
Um, I think it works better with the opaque ones. Um, I'm not too sure how it would work with, you know, a green or a blue. But I suppose you could add it to a bit of white and that will make it opaque. Um, but yeah, have a go. Share if you do. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon. Bye.